All right, guys, welcome back. I wanted to talk about the Reddit AMA or the question and answer thread that has been going on in um, the Total War Reddit today, where the devs were answering questions from the community and things like that. Nature. So, let's get to it. Probably the most major post was Grace, how she was saying that. Um, this is a rough estimate. We're aiming for two more Lord Packs for Warhammer 2. However, please keep in mind that this was planned before COVID-19, and as always, a development is subject to change, so nothing about this is currently set in stone. So, I don't know if that would include the upcoming Lord Pack. I would assume it does. So, if we stick to the speculation of having the Greenskins versus High Elf DLC next, then that leaves one more after that. So, if I had to guess, it's probably going to be Wood Elves versus Beastmen, I would think, hopefully. Um, maybe not, maybe it's a Skaven versus Dwarf DLC, I mean, like, that could be possible too. That means there would be three uh, Skaven DLC for game two, and possibly another one for the third game, but we don't know. Uh, let's get to the next question. Uh, this is a question regarding the search ruins mechanic. Uh, the new search room puzzles are a bit more skillful and transparent than the old search ruins dilemmas. They are also rather limited in number and also kind of create the illusion that every single sediment in the world stands on top of some old one vault. I think that's true and kind of um, additive, to say the least. Um, this guy is basically saying that the addition of the old dilemmas back when the game launched, um, probably, they were probably there for like, I don't know how many DLCs it was after the fact where they replaced the dilemmas, but they were more, um, instead of puzzles, it was like situational, um, dilemmas where if like you see footprints in the snow, if you want to follow them, you want to set a trap, um, things of that nature. So Rich... That CA said that um, certainly something we will consider going forward and how we can make the experience of searching runes being more interesting for you all. So that'd be cool uh, to bring those dilemmas back. It would definitely add more variety to the game instead of solving the puzzle, which I'm guessing most of us just Google the answers anyway. Uh, the thing with the old dilemmas, there was an RNG element. Um, sometimes the you pick the same thing over and over again, so say you pick to um, set a trap it wouldn't end up in the same reward every time sometimes the trap would work sometimes it wouldn't so that would be a cool way to change the gameplay up a little bit next question um, this is about the confederation of lords um, especially with the tomb kings and the vampire coast say you play as luther harkin or um, etc you're not going to be able to confederate any of the other legendary lords for their prospective races. So they were saying that um, they might add a new mechanic. Um, not something that where you could just recruit defeated legendary lords in that one uh, popular mod that's out there. Or just confederate as a in, uh, as an example. Because for Setra, you, you're not going to be able to confederate Arkan. Just, I mean, you could make that happen, but it doesn't make sense with the lore. So they would um, think of some more in-depth way to do that along those lines. Because the thing with the Tomb Kings, there's not a lot of variety with the Lords. Because it's, it's for campaign, you only have your starting Legendary Lord. And then you've got a, the standard Tomb King Lord. Um, and that's it. There's no way to recruit any of the other Legendary Lords to add that variety. So, um, which Mitch says here, um, that you'd much, much prefer... Um, fix along those lines it also solves the host of issues confederation has in regard to things like keeping legendary lord live um, and everything like that and it definitely adds more variety for campaigns so let's go to the next question this was probably the coolest one for me um, this is in regards to the map so obviously in the last DLC update they added a lot to the eastern side of the map 
Uh, this is the question in regards to the southern edge and the western edge. So that's really Lustria and the Southlands. Um, I know a lot of people want the map to go south, um, and this is what they said to that. Uh, each release we look to update the map where possible. As you've just seen, we've expanded quite a bit eastward. It is fair. It is a fair bit more work to expand the entire map, as you suggest along the map the edge. It's really not as simple as when we did the bottom of the Darklands because that space was already there, which is true. If you look at the picture, this picture here, um, all that right side is already in the game. It's just blank and you can't go there. But it's already in the map, so to speak. The border of the right side is all the way to the end of the screen, to the right. Uh, the southern edge, the border is like right where that land is, so they would physically have to make more map instead of painting on a blank canvas that's already over there on the east. They would have to make the canvas and then paint on it for the southern edge and the uh, western edge, which I think could be done maybe for game three, because he does hint here uh, to that, I would say, don't worry, by now we've learned a lot of lessons and we're quite aware of what people want from their campaign maps. But that would be cool if they did add that southern um, edge of the map, because I know a lot of people want that, and I know for sure I want that, because I feel like Lustria and the Hekara got the short end of the stick with being compacted. Meanwhile, they have Norska at the full size. I think Norska, if anything, could be smaller. And that northern part uh, of the Agol Wastelands um, could be chopped off. I'd rather have that chopped off than the bottom part of the map. Let's go to the next one. Uh, this was a cool one. So... Mitch said uh, one of the major things he would have liked to do in a DLC with, uh, if he didn't have the time constraints and uh, lack of resources uh, is having a flying black pyramid for the Tomb Kings. Uh, some may have been, uh, some may have seen we kind of got that in some form, which is true. If you rank it up to level five and you awaken it in the Tomb Kings campaign, then it kind of hovers around on top of the foundation. So his idea is he wanted to make a flying settlement. So he also hints at maybe one day that that'll happen. Uh, who knows? I mean, I think I included this just so it was a little bit playful. But it'd be cool to see one day and then um, see where that goes. Go to the next one. So this is regards into the Proving Ground stuff that has gone on in the last couple months. Um... Nick says here, uh, Proving Grounds has given us some insight into what we can really try out in the future. Generally, I am more interested in solving problems at the core of the game, but I would not exclude that we also might look into different late game mechanics. So the question was in regard to like late game invasions, like the Chaos Invasion and uh, other invasions for the Vortex campaign. I think the Mortal Empires campaign is really missing something. like the stop the order type like the chaos invasion happens late and it's supposed to be like the end game boss but i feel like they need something like mid game maybe like a beastman mechanic or something like that like the i'm sure everyone has played uh has seen like the random savage orc events that happen and the beastman uh bray herd events but no, it, really nothing happens like it, you're not like forced to deal with them they usually die off like two turns within spawning it'd be cool if that was actually an event where like it impacted the campaign. Like say there's beastmen hordes that come from the north or the south or the uh, savage orcs come from the south. Um, like a wa or something. That'd be cool. Uh, and it would also stifle the order tide, I think. And make the, make, uh, the game more fun. Because in the vortex you have, every time you do a ritual you have the chaos invasion that comes with it. So something along those lines would be cool. Um, this is also in regards to the proving grounds. Uh, let's focus on your main point. I do, uh, I do think we currently have a problem with our interaction pacing across recruitment, instruction, skill selection, and other areas of the game. Proving grounds was an experiment to get an idea of how much can be solved by just dealing with the root causes of some of the pacing problems. In that sense, it is about making sure that the limitations that are in the game actually stay relevant throughout the game, which is definitely true. Uh, you need to unlock a unit, then pay for recruitment and its upkeep, and replenish it after it takes damage. All of these four systems are limited by something, for example, by your money. 
Now, often times these limitations break down. These limitation breakdowns are natural in games, and ancillary systems or mechanics are getting added on top to deal with that. Ruben Grounds gives us some insights into what might be solvable at the root and where we might need to add something on top. In a sense, it is very similar with unit caps that are proposed by the community as a solution to the limitation breakdown in the economy. So basically, um, they're saying here that there's some problems, like um, just balance problems, um, to deal with like the late game slog. Like every everyone who has played Total War, I'm sure, has noticed like the game kind of gets a little bit easy towards the end. Like you steamroll, you start to steamroll, and not a lot of campaigns are finished. It's not a challenge anymore. So Proving Grounds was a way to try to combat that um, situation. And they have seen some things they could work with and some things they haven't um, liked, I'm sure. Who knows? But they've definitely seen some stuff that they would be good for. Um, so that's the last question. Um, do you have any questions um, about the AMA and what else could be there I will link it in the comment and section and then if you want to comment on what you think about these questions and the highlight these were the highlights I would say throughout the AMA so let me know uh, be sure to subscribe and um, like the video there my channel has all sorts of Warhammer 2 content and Total War content in general so when they do announce the DLC coming up Whenever they do, just be sure to look at my channel because I'm going to have some early access stuff for you. Alright, have a good one.